As you call that radio TV, we are live. It's sober October, so I'm staying in the house tonight. And um, I'm sure a few more are as well. So I, I, I'm getting a, I'm an absolute honour to welcome a very special guest on tonight. An impromptu chat with an absolute legend. Uh, NME, a former NME writer. Um, wrote for loads of different newspapers and music magazines like Mojo as well. Uh, part of the Anti-Social Workers, a massive dub band in the 80s, who is and very influential. And he's just released um, a soul album under the name Anti-Social Worker, which just came out as well. And yeah, Stan, uh, is, is poet, poet uh, rapper, loves a bit of the grime as well. I was just talking to him there off air. And we were going to do a pre-recording, but we just decided to go live. So uh, feel free to interact uh, if you're watching this live. It's uh, 14th of October. If it's not the 14th of October, just leave a comment and I'll try to reply to everyone that I can. It's Paul Wellens. Welcome Yo, to the bro. show, mate. Yeah, what are you saying, mate? What are you saying? Well, mate, I'm just, as I'm saying, I'm a sober October. <laughs> and I I'm not. Ac- I'm having to quit booze in order to quit smoking. All the regular yeah. viewers are sick of me talking about how I've quit quitting smoking. But I just I'm I'm sick of smoking at the weekends and quitting every week and I'm just I've got my vape here because I'm on, on live on air, so I'll, this is all this is the strongest thing I'll have. The robo snout's the strongest thing I'm having tonight. Yeah. A cup of tea. But um nice. it's great to it's great to speak to you, mate. I've been and you. reading reading up on a lot of your stuff. You've worked with some absolute legends over the years. You have um, uh, what, uh, plug the album straight away though. Let's just plug the album straight away before I forget. It's out now. It is on M One Music dot com. And a social worker, militant business and grime poetry. And the, the great thing about the term grime poetry is is that we had the amazing Don um, on the show the other day. From um, he's he's a Jordy grime poet. Mm. And he just made his first, he's been doing a lot of uh, poetry for the last uh, 10 years. I don't know how long he's done it. For the, I've known him for about 10 years and he's done poetry. And then in the last couple of years, he started uh, doing it over a beat and he's nailing it. And I, I think the Geordie accent sounds fantastic on it. So, uh, but yeah, so it's good to, two grind poets in a month on your call at radio. Uh, so, pleased to have you on the show, mate. Let's go, wh- 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 um, wh- let's go to the first song you ever wrote. How did that come about? How did, when did you start writing? Did the well, did the journalism did the writing come before the the raps or or the poetry? What happened? Well, um, I mean, I've got the first poem here. If you want to hear it, do you want to hear it live? Yes, mate. Can of we course. Go with that? Yeah, that's a good like... way to start the show. Writing yeah, about it. Name Let's Essen. do it. Let's do it. Um, I mean, this was um, written when I was nineteen years old, and it it um, it made it. Uh, it didn't make it onto the first Anti-Social Workers album, but it went on to the the, the current album uh, with a sort of very heavy hip-hop beat behind it. It's called Master Race Face. You get respect... Sorry, Master. Take two. To get respect, you have to give respect. You're the face that launched a thousand zits. You can't read our old diary without moving your lips. The only woman's movement you like is from the waist down. You'll make some girl feel rich, a cosmetic surgeon. Being dumb as you look would need a frontal lobotomy. You're like Frankie Stein's monster with Eagle's personality. Someone said you look like Jimmy Dean, an old lady with a white stick. If my dog had your face, I'd shave its ass and make it walk backwards quick. You've nothing nor for the shoulders. You losing charades to Mr. Wonder. Letting you live at all was your mum's biggest blunder. You'd have to study for a blood test. You belong to Pooper. You think manual labour is the president of Cuba. You say this is the white land of your dreams, all of them wet. You reckon you grow on people, but so do hairy waltz. 
You've done for equal rights what Psycho did for showers. You're the master race face, born to crawl and cower. Thank you. That's me. Superb, mate. Superb. <laughs> Where's my round of applause button? I've got a round of applause button, surely. <laughs> Where is it? A day. A day yeah, not, not bad for 19, you are. Yeah, we need to change that one, actually. Quarantine stream, all that stuff needs to go in the bin. But uh, that was brilliant, mate. No, 19-year-old. 19 years old, I wrote that, yeah, because it was the rise of, you know, uh, all the rock against races, anti-Nazi league and all that. And there was all these Nazi bands coming out. And I, was, I just thought, no, no, we ain't having that. And, um, you know, because I, I spent, like, 30 years of my life in... in the East End in London's Tower Hamlets Borough, which is, is probably is the most cult, yeah, the Collingwood Estate. Yeah, so it's probably is... the most cult, uh, multicultural place on the planet. You know, Tower Hamlets. Um, but basically, yeah. So I started off doing a bit of poetry, and then um, I met some guy when I, I was working on a local newspaper, writing about music and football and stuff like that. And I met these these dudes just outside North London. Um, and um, I met these dudes and um, we formed the anti-social workers and we were just like spitting bars over the top of um, uh, like what they call version excursions, you know, like by, like you know, the dub side of a reggae single. So, you know, have Aswad's Warrior Charge as an instrumental and we just do our poetry over the top of that. And then we took it to this guy called the Mad Professor uh, who was in Peckham, South East London at the time, um, who went on to be like, the biggest dub producer in the UK, you know, by far. He's like the equivalent of Lee Scratch Perry in Jamaica, you know. And uh, he produced all these original dub tunes, and um, and we we put an album out, and uh, it went. It was called uh, Positive Style in 1983. It got into the front cover of Sounds magazine. We got interviewed by the NME and everything, and and it all took off. We we started touring with Eka Mouse, you know, the reggae icons like Eka Mouse. Uh, Marley's partner, Peter Tosh, we did, you know, we ended up doing the London Dominion Theatre to a massive crowd there. Um, that was a sellout. And um, although, having said that, some of the reggae purists didn't like us because we were like these roughneck punks um, and some of them were throwing plastic glasses at us and all that. But, you know, I can take that. I'm a big boy. And um, But that was great. And then... Um, and then that sort of fizzled out. And then I got into DJing. I was doing like Ministry of Sound in London. I was doing Pasha in Ibiza. And and that was what I was really doing, really. And a bit of poetry, a uh, bit of street poetry. And then, um, you know, I'm bringing up families and all the usual stuff that goes on in your life. You know, sometimes the art has to go on the back burner. And um, But when Johnson got in, I felt this real righteous anger rising up because I just thought he was such a liar, such a fraud. And um, and it's always triggered me that, that, that sort of class war that the super rich start, you know. And um, and I thought, Do you know what, I'm going back in this studio. I'm going to go in as anti-social worker, singular, as opposed to the workers. And I put out this album called Militant Business and Grime Poetry. Um, he's, he's doing really well. You know, we've had plays on Radio 1, 1 Extra, 6 Music. It was all done in one take, the album. It was done in two two hours. I did it in one take. Uh, all the tunes were selected on the day, mainly hip-hop and grime tunes. Um, and, you know, for a small independent label, doing all that in one take and, you know, getting rave reviews and, and, and that kind of radio coverage. You know, for a black-owned indie label as well. It was It's owned by a guy called Le Magnifique, who's... Um, or West, in my opinion, Northwest London's finest rapper, and um, yeah, he, him, and this guy called Cutmaster Robinson, who's the producer, they, 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 they created the tunes for me, and I just spat, spat my bars over the top of it, and you know, I'm, I'm really proud of it, and I'm doing festivals coming up, and I'm doing, I'm getting an agent, you know, I'm getting an agent in London who, who represents, you know, some of the top comedians in the country and stuff, so um, and poets, so. You know, I'm hoping to get some big work out of it. I want to get Glastonbury, you know, in, on the small stage and, um, you know, Rebellion and all that stuff. You know, that's what I want to do. Amazing, mate. Amazing. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a good idea, I think, doing that 
<clears throat> doing an album quickly that I tend to find that if I if I just set myself a deadline and I stick to it, some yeah. amazing things happen. But then I think I overdid it the, the last time, so this time I'm, I've been taking my time, and as a result, not much is happening because you just got all the time in the world. So it's good to have a deadline <laughs> in it. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah, but I mean, seen, but you seen one take. I mean, I'm assuming that you were you, you spent you, you poured over the lyrics for a while. You you were practicing. Oh yeah, no, no, don't like get that. me wrong. I didn't do it freestyle. I, I'd written all the <laughs> no, lyrics no. beforehand. <laughs> I'd written all the lyrics beforehand, but I literally did them in one take. We, we didn't we didn't do any edits, nothing. No. You know, the whole album was recorded in two hours, and I, that's straight. I'm telling you straight. That's what it. Yeah, um, yeah. So amazing. Uh, we've, it. Got, we've got Jim Jim Morning, who's um, a, a, we, we sometimes do a, a a poetry slam one here. We do one a year, and we do like a wee quarter final, semi finals, and a final. And, yeah. uh, Jim Morning's known as the Grumpy Judge, and he's actually said excellent poem. Oh so, wow! Um, his, his the most I think the highest he's ever given anyone. Is a five, and he's given it a six out of ten. So is that's, he really? That's, wow, that, that, I'm not worthy. That, that's good. Oh, I'm honoured. I'm blessed. I think, I I think like Jim blessed. stuff. He's got some, some a lot, a lot of um, anti-fascist, anti-racist poetry coming oh, from good. a, a Scottish perspective. Spirit. Yeah, um, nice. but yeah, yeah man. Uh, well, Katie Christie's now. Hello, Katie. She says it was awesome. Oh, Katie, love it. Uh, Stuart Graham's in the house. Hello, Stuart. Uh, Paul says that was a solid poem for a 19 year old I was yeah. drinking Thunderbirds <laughs> so was I mate <laughs> that's probably what inspired it <laughs> is it Thunderbird or Thunderbirds is it just Thunderbird I, I called it Thunderbird I don't know I mean also maybe, other... maybe I've, I've just never seen it written down it's not you know it's not, he also it's... used to drink that horrible stuff barley wine I don't know if you've ever drunk that oh god I don't know barley wine but I th Thunderbirds did exist when we were, we were doing underage drinking but I was Mary a Mary Down man myself you yeah, Mary Ma Down Cider well, that was the other one we had Mary yeah, Down that... Cider and yeah, yeah, I think yeah. what was the other one uh, Mad Dog 2020 yeah yeah all lethal yeah, yeah but it's um, Sober October Different I'm just times, on the Guinness tonight. <laughs> it was a different era. It was it last was month. It was, it was last month. Yeah. Um, also, Paul's added as well that um, that my professor was amazing. Loved amazing. His, yeah. Dub, loved this dub mix of the Protection album, the Massive yeah. Attack. No, he's a legend. He's he, he's worked with all of them, right? Massive Attack, Sade. You know, he's done, he's, he's he's a remix producer in great demand and. We had some great times with him in the studio. He, he literally lives up to his name. He's like mad as a box of frogs, you know. Uh, <laughs> but um, beautiful, beautiful album he produced for us, you know. I mean, it, he made our fairly standard lyrics sound, you know, super cool because of his dub rhythms, you know. Um, so all, all, all respect well, you, to him. You, 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 I, I seen that you say that you, were, you, had, you had a good line about name dropping. That you can, that you can say you don't like the name drop. I'll let you say that name. But we actually have a part of the show called the name drop, and I'll I was going to get the name drops. I want to get your name drops out of the way. Just the like... name drop. You call that radio? No, obviously, mad professor. To 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 do what with mad professor? That's a name drop and a half. Yeah, I'll pick but that I... one up off the floor. Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> The trouble, with, the trouble with being a journalist is you have met a lot of so-called celebrities. You know, most of them are arseholes, but, you know, I'd rather be down my mates with a pub than some of these celebrity parties. But, um, you know, and trouble is, you know, as, as, I, as I said earlier, you know, um, that's, that's the nature of journalism. You do, you do meet those people. So, you know, I worked for the NME for, like, throughout the 80s. So I met a few people, you know. Some good, uh, some uh, bad, could, some ugly. Yeah, but I think there is maybe a point of, of celebrity though. They, they're not living normal lives, are they? So they're just travelling in the world and everyone's kissing their ass. Yeah, that's true. So they're not living. So I think yeah. it must be quite hard to stay grounded and stay a normal person. It is, everybody. yeah. I mean, yeah, me and you, we're like we're real ones. You know what I mean? What what we call you in London? You're a real one. And um, you know, once you, as you say, I mean, I've got another poem actually. I'll read that. It's, it's very appropriate actually for. Uh, what you're talking about let me find it talk amongst yourselves go on no, talk, talk, the talk, 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 about, talk about you talk about well I'll oh, talk i got about... it i got it i got it i got it all right, well, I thought I i'm going to talk about you if you want no 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 it's not all about me it's not all, all right about mate me. here we take go it, take it away take it away this is this is from the new album right it's called real going out to all the spitters drillers rappers shellers sprayers shutters hustlers trappers and and barers 
She said, music is not competition. Music is a mission. Wise up and rise up. Ain't got no Lambo. Ain't got no diamond grill. Ain't got a million in the bank. I'm real. Ain't got bikini video models. Ain't got a fur coat. Ain't popping crisps. I'm real. Ain't got a private jet. Ain't got a luxury crib. Ain't lighting cigars with dollars. I'm real. I'm real. I'm real. I'm a real one. I swear down. There you go. That's Amazing, about, man. Amazing. Yeah, it's all about how hip hop has been commercialised, and you know, I mean, my my hip hop that I love is stuff like Public Enemy and and Tupac and all that. But that's not then that's proper conscious hip hop, you know. Whereas the stuff that's coming out now, every fucking video has got like a private jet and uh, you know, they're in mink coats, and I just thought this got no relation to my world or the people I grew up with at all, you know. It seems to be that's the, the sort of chart side of the, the thing. But as you you're just saying off air, you're talking about you're a massive fan of the of Grime and how it's the yeah I love the, it the new yeah. punk yeah yeah it's the new punk because it it's got minimalist beats it's anti authority you know it's very militant um, anti establishment it's DIY music a lot of people just do it on their laptop at home I mean I I got into it when it first started about twenty years ago I went into this um, my mate's shop in Essex, he had a record store, and um, he said, Paul, you've got to listen to this, mate, and it was uh, a, a tune called um, Dollar Sign by Sticky, and I, I thought, fuck it, oh, this is super cool, what is this? And he goes, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a new form of music, and it, it was the, one of the very first grime tunes ever, and I thought, this is like fresh, I love it, and, um, and, and you know, I've lived and breathed the scene ever since, you know, I've I love it. I listen to One Extra all day long, listening to Grime. You know, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've got hundreds of Grime albums. I've seen loads of Grime acts live, and yeah. So, where the, did you said that the new singles got got played in One Extra? Yeah, and so yeah, One I'm, Extra I'm, Six Music, Six Music, and Radio One on the specialist shows in the evening. It, then obviously, it's not going to get played in the daytime. Still getting, getting Radio One because it's got words like pussy hole and all that on it. You know what I mean? I ain't, <laughs> ain't going to get away with that. But, gonna get although I have had a radio edit of it, they actually took Pussy Hole out. They've done their own edit of it. So on one, I think it was like Radio Essex or something like that. I've had, I've I've managed, I've had swear words on Six Music before, but it's have just you? because they didn't understand my accent. Really? Then, yeah, they just. They, what was that with your hip hop thing? Jack, Jack no, I was saying my, I've got this, I've got this band called oh, Gyro Babies, which is like yeah, yeah. 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 So it's kind of no, like rock, I don't know, post punk sort of thing. But it's it was the song went, I'm I'm not an arsehole, I'm a secret animal. And it was quite blatantly said that three times in the song. <laughs> and then there's another bit where what I said What time did that go out? fucking dinner time. Really? Paid, like, <laughs> told the bot shit. Told the bot oh, shit. I said as yeah. well the word shit. But I said that quite fast, so it was a I mean I think I can understand why that's fell under the radar, but I thought maybe arsehole isn't a swear word. I don't know. But they they played it. No, I, but they, then then you the next time get away with a hole. But, I mean, I like that Gyro Babies. You sent me all the links to your music, you know. I, I, I thought you sounded like Comsat Angels. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I don't, I they, don't think... They were a very big post-punk band in the sort of early 80s. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got a note of them. I've, I've got it on my phone to check them out. Yeah, I think you'd like to... them. Yeah, I will, I will definitely check them out. Uh, but also, Jeremy Kyle, we had a song called Jeremy Kyle Fucking My Wife, but Paul Hickman <laughs> played that on the radio. But he did a radio edit of it so that... And so it was, he reversed the word fuck, so it's Jeremy Kyle's been fucking my wife. Um, oh, he's got a new so show still, coming so, out, so Christ knows why. Um, there's um, t- Tam Devan is here, everyone loves a secret animal. Tam, um, what's that mean? A secret animal, secret animals, the song that I just mentioned. Ah, oh. it's, it's, got, it's got a garden party, secret animal garden parties now. Um, we've okay. got Mary down for the win, Mad Professor is the boss. He is. Um, Stuart enjoyed your last poem. Oh, lovely. Uh, Real Lewis good. talking I like about Mary that. Down Silver. I can't remember if it was silver or, or gold. I yeah, know. I had I silver. Yeah, I yeah, don't, yeah. I don't, I don't really remember what the difference was. What was the difference? One was dry and one was Yeah, one was wet. sweeter, wasn't it? Yeah. Sweet, all right, okay. That yeah, was, yeah. Was Jeremy Kill's been riding my bike, correct? That's the radio edit. Going back to... Let's stop talking about me. Wait, going back to the the enemy journalism. So we, yeah. Because, I mean, I, I used to... I mean, you were writing in the eight. You said the 80s. So yeah. I was probably a bit too young for, for your comments, but... I was obsessed with it in the 90s, man. I was buying it every week. I bought, yeah. probably bought, if I had enough money, I'd maybe buy the Melody Maker as well. But I yeah. always preferred the NME. I loved the... Yeah, yeah. I just loved the, the sort of form of journalism back then. 
And I think it was a bit more exciting. I mean, I've tried, I, I, I do write for my own website. I try and do music journalism. It's a very hard art form, man, because Jeez, yeah. I don't I don't really like putting things down. I th- you know, if I don't, I've got nothing nice to say, I try not to write about it at all. And it's difficult to, you know, write in a, an artistic way to, tell, to find an interesting way of saying that you like something. So I've got a lot of respect for music journalists. Have you yeah. got any advice? How, have you got any advice to well, for what, like myself? My advice, I've got... Do? Oh, this, this is another name drop. Uh, this is uh, advice I got from Danny Baker, you know, uh, who's who's yeah. now a little bit. He's been cancelled a little bit now, but has he? Um, what's he been cancelled for? Um, I'll, I'll better not go into all that because it might be le- <laughs> legalistic. But um, yeah, so he told me always don't write about the band and what songs they played, and what clothes they're wearing. Just write about what you did that day, all the funny things that happened on your journey, and then just mention the band at the end. And that's what yeah. I used to do because I, I led quite a lively life. You know, I was a bit of a rascal and I always used to talk about that that side of stuff and then just mention the band at the end, you know. That's a brilliant idea, man. Do you know what? <laughs> you're right as well because when, when I have done it before, it has been like, you know, more like a, yeah, the, the story of getting to the show and coming back and yeah. Yeah, all that, yeah. I did all that. Because yeah, yeah. what you're doing is you're writing a short story. Which yeah, is, exactly. And actually, yeah. it's actually like a piece of art in its own right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm need to exactly that. Into it. Yeah, you nailed um, it. You nailed it. Ali Grant says you guys would do a decent cover of Comsat Angels Independence oh, Day. June. Big Katie tune. says, Katie says, always look for your articles in NME because I'm way older than Mark. Oh, so lovely. Got, Thanks, so Katie, Katie's aware of, aware of your stuff. So I went under a few pseudonyms. I mean, I used to go under the pseudonym uh, because I was worried about me uh, benefits getting cut. So I used <laughs> to uh, I used to go under Terry Malloy, which is my favourite character in On the Waterfront, you know, the Marlon Brando film. Yeah. And um, I also went as Paul Kicks because there was an Adrian Frills around at the time. So I thought I'd call myself Paul Kicks. Um but I did write under my real name for the Melody Maker. I went under the name Jimmy Mack for sounds when I wrote for them. And I did some poems as Jimmy Mack as well on a few punk albums. But um, but I've always, yeah, I've always, nowadays, obviously, I've written like two or three, you know, slim little volumes on popular culture, some books that were published by an independent socialist publisher. Um, you know, uh, so... And I've written under my own name, obviously. I mean, I wrote a thing called... Um... Oh, I think you froze there, mate. Paul has frozen. But what I'm going to do is I want to play one of his, uh, the, the new single, and hopefully we'll get him back. Um, Paul, if you can hear me, I think what you just need to do is log out and log back in again, and we'll get the end of that Hello? story. Yeah, sorry, man. Oh, you're back, you're back. Oh, good, all right. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 you're back, book, you're back, I, I can hear you fine. Yeah, I wrote a book called I'm a Journalist, Get Me Out of Here, which is all about my life on the enemy in the mirror. And it was all about the sort of, um, uh, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, just, I was just there at the, when it was a very street smart time in, in, in music journalism, you know, and there were, there were very few working class writers on the music press. There were a lot of sort of, Middle class guys in leather jackets, but there, there weren't too many people from my kind of background. But the, um, and then the second one. Yeah, okay, so I think the, there's. Have I got it again? <laughs> I'm doing this in stages. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then the other two were, um, I did a thing called Sex Lines and Videotape, which is like cult cult film quotes because i'm a massive film fan i've got about a thousand films in tours well um and uh, also um and then the last one was the divine comedians which was uh quotes from radical stand-up comedians people i love like richard Pryor and i don't know whatever russell brand or whoever yeah it's so like, i've done, the, the, the done a little bit of that how can, how can you get the books oh they're all on amazon and you know decent Bookshops can order in Waterstones. I've done like book signings in Waterstones and all that. But they're only slim little volumes. I mean, don't expect too much for Christ's sake. But you know, have, they're you, all done, right. have you done? Um, have you turned them into audio books yet? No, we, we never did that. No, it was it was done on a a, a thing called a, a Progressive Press, which they did a. I think they did a, a book by Tony Ben, and um, they did a, a, a they did a lot of socialist imprints anyway. Um, and yeah, no. 
Because when you were Arsenal enemy, ju- when you were enemy journalist, you, is, I take it that's how you met James Brown. I just, I'm just looking at the list of the name drops. Yeah, <laughs> James well, Brown. Like, well, I think that's probably the name drop of the year. That, that was one of the that was one of the shortest interviews I ever did. <laughs> I met him at uh, some kind of I think it was the DJ. What was it called now? DJ of the Year Awards or something like that. And he was performing live. And um, I just met him backstage and I was you know, I literally just spoke to him for about a minute. And um, and then when he was on stage, I managed to touch his flair, which was, I don't know, it meant something to me. I don't know why. I was really into funk at the time. And uh, I touched his massive, great 40-inch flares he was wearing. So, I don't know. It seems silly now, but, yeah. I oh, know, he's a legend, yeah. What about, what was, I can't remember off the top of my head, but that was the one that stuck it. Um, can we just get any more name drops out the way just now before I play your your new your new single? Oh, I'm going to sound such a dickhead, like, quote, what, quoting, pe- quoting people I've interviewed. Is that what yeah, you want? Yeah, I, 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 well, I, I that's what I do. I'll be telling really? everyone I interviewed Paul Wellens next week, so. <laughs> what um, was the line as well you're saying? You don't, you don't like to name drop, so you can start off with that one, because I, I thought that was funny. You don't like to name drop as you were telling Oh well, well as I, well, as I, I can't remember. I, well, I used to say as I, as I said to Nel, Nelson Mandela, I don't like name droppers, but he, he's no longer here. So I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't it was know pope. Who, I think it was the, it was no, the, the pope. pope that's right. As I said to the pope recently, yeah, that's how I updated it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, what do you want? Well, I'll just do my favourites, really. Um, I mean, I did. Aye, who was sound? Who was actually yeah. nice? Who was actually? Because we talked about earlier on about how it's hard to keep grounded and yeah. and not become an asshole with the fame. So yeah. who, who stayed sound? Well, who kept it real? The most memorable ones for me were, um, I mean, Paul Weller was very memorable, but he was a miserable sod, I've got to be honest. And I love, I love his music. I've always loved Paul Weller from the jam, you know, Style Council, everything. I loved him. Um, and uh, and I did Reggie Cry as well, which was, that was pretty, pretty heavy. You know what I mean? So I did him in Parkhurst Prison, yeah. And um, wow. yeah, and he, he gave me one of them handshakes that, you know, you sort of checked how many fingers you had after after shaking hands with him. Um, but yeah, so that was an interesting one. You know, we got spun as we went in. You know, he sent us a VO just saying, "Bring me some Rothman cigarettes and God bless Reg and all this." I mean, not that I was, you know, I, I don't hear I worship scumbags, but it was, you know, and they were bad people in the East End. I, I, I knew his. Um, I, I got introduced to him by um, his brother Charlie Cray. He was actually a bit of a gentleman. Um, you know, he was he was okay, but um, obviously the twins were, were were fucking psychopaths. Let's be honest. Um, and about raucous. Sorry, about raucous. I heard the one about raucous. Rascals. Oh, bit, bit of a raucous. Raucous, raucous. A raucous. Oh yeah. Oh, they the called them about rascals. Anywhere. Oh yeah, they were, they, they called them raucous anywhere. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know. Um, you know, but I, I don't think they were the sort of Robin Hood characters people paint them out to be. I know they, they lent on a lot of people who were really struggling, but I don't want to get into that because I don't no, want to no, well, play associates coming it's just, it's just after that, me. It's just, a, it's just the way that people's obsession but, with crime and stuff as well. And I mean, you're getting yeah, that way. You, get you know that what? I'm a, I'm true actually, crime as well. You know, all these, all these murderers uh, on Netflix. Uh, getting, yeah. Like, I, 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 I was Dammer mainly stuff. interested in... in you know, what a glamorous life it was in the 60s. That's what I wanted to know, you know. And and he, he did give me a bit of that, but he saved all the best bits probably for his book. But I thought, I ain't going to come in here. I'm going to take everything he says with a pinch of salt. I ain't going to hear it, hear I worship scumbags, you know what I mean? And um, But I, I did love his brother, I've got to be honest. Charlie Cray treated me lovely. And he, and he wasn't a psycho, you know. He was, and I am drawn, I am a bit drawn to those sort of, bad boys, a bit like, you know, a moth to a flame, really, and and he'd say to me, oh, don't worry, Paul, no, no one will touch you, you know, everyone, uh, I'm, I, you know, if anyone wants to wine, you know, I'll iron them out, and if anyone has a go at you, you know what I mean? He was like, fucking awful, I've got Charlie Cray in my corner, you know what I mean? But I'm not... But you're I, the bad boys I, I, I don't want to glamorise violence, and I, I don't... Your favourite TV glamour- shows are Sopranos, and I would say that's mine as well. Oh, and, I love it. And I think love that's the only, the only TV show, uh, during lockdown, that was... See, I don't really like watching a series again once I've seen it. I think life's too short. I don't really watch much TV anyway. Yeah. So when it's, but uh, my 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 partner she hadn't, she hadn't seen it yet. So watched it from start to finish, yeah. and I think it would quite so much time had passed as well. So you know I would have been in my twenties, early twenties when Sopranos finished. 
So watching it in your thirties, it was a totally different experience because obviously you're a bit, well, allegedly more mature <laughs> in, in, yeah. in some respects. So there was a lot more that I, that I maybe didn't catch the first time round. And it was yeah, man, that's fantastic. right, that's right. I mean, it's soprano, soprano is you know, the greatest thing on TV, in my opinion, and The Wire. We talked about that as well, and the co- and comedy wise as well. I think Sopranos gets underrated. It doesn't oh, really get mentioned just how funny written. it was at times. Beautifully written as well. You Should know, I that, watch that... The Wire again? Someone told me that The Wire's dated a little bit because I'm, I'm thinking about maybe watching that again. Instead of watching a new mediocre TV show, I'm thinking about watching another classic. Do you think The Wire... Yeah. Is, does it start no, I, I watched The Wire about a couple of years ago, season one, and yeah. um, still loved it, yeah. Um, yeah. But The Sopranos, I always found... I just couldn't wait for it to come on every week, you know, because it... And by the end of it, it was... So, as I said, so beautifully written, that vulnerability about Tony Soprano, you know, going to see the psychiatrist and, you know, I don't know, I just, it was just the best drama. And funny enough, when I, when I, and this is another terrible name drop, but excuse me for this. Keep them coming, they love a name drop. But but when I I did some poetry at the um, Jamaican Calabash Festival uh, on Treasure Beach in Jamaica, and um, I shared a stage with Lincoln Quasi Johnson, but at that festival, I met uh, David Chase, the creator of um, of uh, of The Wire, and uh, was he involved in The Sopranos as well? I can't remember now. Who wrote The Sopranos? I'm getting mixed up now. Yeah, no, it was a different guy. It was no, it was a different guy. guy for The Sopranos. Yeah, but David Chase, I met for yeah, who did The Wire because he was talking about Idris Elba, and I said, I, I said, you know, I've lived, you know, even though I was born in the London New Towns, I said I grew up. I was raised in, in the East Oh, no, sorry, David Chase did write The Sopranos, sorry. Oh, he did, sorry, he did, yeah. So sorry, I met yeah. him, I met the creator of The Wire yeah, and The, the wa- Sopranos, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the David, who, so who did The Wire then? Is it, I think it was David Chase. Guy? I think was it's the it? same guy. Gee, what? That's yeah. incredible, I didn't even know that. Yeah, there you go. The double check it, I might be double talking, check I might be it. chatting I thought, shit. <laughs> let's see, you might be right though, who done? David Simon did mm. The Wire. Sorry, David. you're right, it was another David, yeah. Did yeah, so I thought David... Too I saw many. David Simon, but I also saw um, Tony's nephew. And I've forgotten the actor's name. He was there as well. What's oh, yes. Act- you, you know the guy. He was always getting in trouble, and Tony was bailing him out all the time. Yes. Yeah, he's actually... He did, I've forgotten uh, the actor's name now, but we had yeah, a I've got, chat about it, yeah. Yeah, I've got it here. I've got it here. Because uh, he, he actually... I've actually got a good wee story about him, believe it or not. So Christopher, uh, yeah, so Christopher, he, yeah, one, Multisanti, Christopher that's Multisanti. It. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot so the actor's he, name, but the actor's name. I'm just going to bring it up because he is. It was uh, Michael. Um, um, uh, uh, sorry if I'm butchering the pronunciation, but um, Imperioli. That's Imp- it. Yeah, that's Michael it. Imperioli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got a good story about him actually. He, uh, so w- one of our friends, he's uh, an amazing. Uh, James Price, an amazing director. Check him out if you can. He's making some some really hard hitting short films from Glasgow, from the the schemes or what you would call an estate um, down there, but we call them schemes up here. So he no. makes some really good hard hitting short films, and he just messaged uh, Chris Simon Montag Sandy and said, because he's in a, he's got a band, and he went, can I make you a music video? And he made him a music video. It is incredible. I wow. actually, I'll, I'll maybe uh, play that. I'll send you a link to it actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah. it's. And he just kept it completely Scottish. He filmed it in Springburn, yeah. And and the guy used it. So a small world, small world. So he, so yeah. he said. So what was what was meeting him like? Oh, it, was, it was incredible because I just thought, oh my god, you know, I idolised that show. And um, he was just talking about um, uh, I think Jan- James Gandolfini had just passed at the time, and he was saying how, how sad it all was, and, and that no one saw that coming, and. Um, and I just watched Gandolfini's last movie that he made before he died as well, and uh, yeah, so it's all it's all quite emotional, really. But yeah. I thought, what's what's little old me doing talking to these giants? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, I, someone someone that you watch that much in the telly in real life must be. So he's well, he, seemed, he does seem like an, I've seen him in interviews and stuff, and he just seems like a well, a very good actor for a start because he's he's um, mm. that that act, the, the role he played is nothing like he is in real life, obviously. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes you get people that just play themselves. Like Joe Pesci, I imagine, is just Joe Pesci. <laughs> <laughs> have, you heard, have you heard the Joe Pesci Sings album? That's hilarious. No. Oh, he, that? does like, he does like a cabaret thing. He sounds like sort of like a poor man's Frank Sinatra. It's, 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 it's a really funny album. Well, yeah. is it meant to be funny? Yeah, no, no, he's not meant to be funny, but he's oh, okay. funny, yeah. <laughs> that might make it funnier. Uh, 
I'll check yeah. that out, Joe Pesci Six. I've actually got I've got a wee clip here of you just oh, before we, we get off. For, final thing we'll say in the NME is um, uh, we've got a wee interview you talk on Channel Four talking yeah. about the music business. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we'll have a copyright issue with this because it's, it's we're going back a bit. And I don't oh think yeah, it's, it's ninety two. Yeah, ninety two, and I don't think it's on. It's it's not on uh, Channel 4's YouTube channel, so it should be nah, fine. So this is you on Channel Four talking about uh, the music business in nineteen ninety two. Yeah. So let's just watch that, yeah. and um, and we'll we'll get your thoughts. Hold on. So I'll just bring that on the screen. <laughs> The music business, full of boozers, losers, and jacuzzi users. Ever since I was an ace reporter on the music press and a radio DJ, I've always thought the pop industry was a load of old top. Look at Brit Award-winning weekly rocker Rod Stewart. You've got to hand it to Rod for making a living as a singer all these years. His voice reminds me of some poor screamer on the lab, suffering from acute constipation. Marvin Gaye, he ain't. Or well, take David Essex, please. I was a bit put out to see Mr Essex manage to get back to civilization after his truck broke down in the desert, a hundred miles from anywhere. But seriously, David, do us a favour. The next time you go to the desert, take a few others with you. Like, say, the gay whale merchant, Sting. Housewife's Choice, Cliff Richard. Or Soap Dodger, Sir Bob Geldof. Is someone having a jest when they tell us yes have reformed alongside ELP and Mike Oldfield? These are the bland that time forgot. LPs, CDs, who gives two monkeys? Slippery deals from slippery hills. With the new boss, same as the old boss. These dinosaurs took an early bath even in my school days, when us rascals discovered there was more sex, seduction and sedition at five minutes of a soul weekender than taking your childhood sweetheart to see Yes perform 30 minute tunes like the snappily titled Tales from Topographic Oceans. I bet the Milko whistled that one while delivering his daily pointer. If these geriatrics return, what hope is there for the young and gifted ones trying to pull a dollar? The music business is one of the youngest, wealthiest and most self-indulgent industries of the 20th century. It survives and thrives on geriatric DJs similar to Harry Enfield's characters Nice and Smash. Free trips to America, free lunches, payola, kickbacks, white rasters, heroin taking rock stars, valium choking record executives, Overpaid nitwits picking up an annual salary my dad didn't earn in 40 hard-working years. Plus out-of-touch talent scouts who discover a dance tune six months after it's torn the roof off in the clubs and then they turn heroes into zeros. What we need is a younger, faster, cleverer, tougher music business. Not the false hair, false teeth, false smiles and false words we get now. We should recognise the real power and influence of the club DJs. Encourage the free enterprise of self run groups like Soul to Soul or Feisty Ladies like Lisa Stansfield and get street smart operators in key positions in the industry. Because unless we get some changes, the music business will remain as much use as a chocolate teapot. <laughs> Nineteen ninety-two. God, I sound even more cockney there than I do now. Jesus, terrible. It's, but uh, yeah, and that was all filmed in Madame Two Swords, obviously. You know, with all the waxwork dummies. But it could have been the real people. You know, had about as much life in him as them. And what, what, what advice would you give to someone like myself who's trying to do the interviews? What What is uh, a bit of advice if you're doing interviews? Oh, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a great interviewer or anything, but I always. You know, I like to use, you know, very unusual questions. I don't know. But I, I'd be a good listener, I think. Don't interrupt too much. I think that's important. You know, let them, you know, get their flow going and, you know, just chip in when when you've got something decent to say. But don't start saying, you know, what are your influences and, you know, what colour are your underpants or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Just, just be a bit uh, quirky and, um, yeah, just... But to be a good listener, I think that's the best advice, yeah. Listening. Epi says, that was a flashback and a half. It was, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, Tam says, 
Into, into Marky, Marky Smith. Smith. I love Marky Smith. Yeah, I went to see him just before he died, and um, I've always I've always liked the fall, you know, because like John Peel used to play some anti-social worker records on his show, and um, he played Who's Watching You, which is I think you're going to play later. Um, and uh, yeah, I saw Mark Smith live, and um, I, w- I watched him backstage, and he was like completely mashed. He was like drinking pint after can after can of bitter or whatever he was drinking. He staggered on stage, <laughs> he tripped over everything. And um, and he just sort of said, said something like, you know, I can't do a man accent, but he's just like, how are you, you cunts, or whatever, you know. And um, yeah, it was, but it was, it was shambolic, but it was utterly brilliant. You just couldn't take your eyes off him, you know what I mean? And uh, we've got a question from you from Jim Monin, who said, Paul yeah, to Stuart Cosgrove, yeah, 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 Scott, yeah, from your manner, yeah, Scottish guy, very good writer. Yeah, we what uh, we used to fight over the soul albums actually when they came into the offices i used to try and grab them before he grabbed them to review but oh he's a great writer yeah he's written books on ali and black america black american music i think he's got one out right now actually just come out he has he has he has just released a book i can't remember what i can't remember what off the top yeah but it's a link between american uh music and american politics and I, 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 or that might have been one of his previous ones, but I know he went not to be something big in the TV world. I think he was very big on Channel Four or something. Yeah, I mean, well, I, see, I did, I've I, lost contact with him now, but I'd lost. Um, I've, I, I didn't know that he was, he was such a, a great writer. I, I knew oh, a great writer. Yeah, he's big, he's big. He's big up here mainly for hosting um, sports shows like Off the Ball and you know, yeah. growing up as a football fan, he was, yeah. he was, he was just a really good host. So it was actually later on that I figured that I found out that he was such a great writer. But yeah, no, he, absolutely. No, he, he was, I tried to get him on the show. Of... I have asked him. He didn't get back to me. So hopefully oh, he'll That's his um, loss, isn't it? That's his <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Marco says the Sopranos brought the Alabama 3 to the world. They did. I'm jury watching it. Such good telling. Oh, the best. And, yeah, uh, that, that was everything. That was everything, the Sopranos, yeah. A show to all Alabama 3. I think we've had every single member of Alabama 3 on here at some point in the team. Oh, good. So, um, yeah, shout out to them, great band. And um, it was, Jim says he was a commission editor for Channel 4 that, at one that's point. That's what he was. That's, that's it, what yeah. it is. Yeah, amazing. Colette's saying, uh, Mark, ring me when you get a minute. It's Protobel. Of you. You're looking, bro. Thank you very much. Love, I'll, baby I'll doll. Aye, aye. All right, baby doll, sugar cube. Uh, that's, <laughs> baby that's, cakes. That is uh, that is Colette in the house. Okay, so, man, I'm going to play, I'm going to play the new single. So, you said it was, so you've already kind of hinted that it was Boris Johnson being shite at his job that's going to inspire this return. Also, so you were yeah. the anti-social workers and now you're the anti-social worker. What happened What happened to the rest of the, the band? I don't know. Like, we, we were teenagers, you know what I mean? You have silly little fallouts, all that cliche about musical differences and all that. Um, but, you know, it, it just it ran its course. We achieved everything we wanted to achieve. And, um, and then I decided I wanted to get into DJing and, and other stuff, you know? Um, and yeah, that was it, really. I mean, I don't, I don't speak, I don't know the where the what the other guys are doing now. I've got no real contact with them. Um, so you know, good luck to them, whatever they're doing. But I went in, I went in a different direction. Did you say that you you? Am I right? I was reading an interview with you, and you were saying that you was actually broke up just as you were you were hit, you were just hitting. You were on the front cover of the magazine or something like that? Yeah, we just got on the front cover of Sounds. And, um, yeah, we did an interview and uh, that was a few arguments about, you know, the interview and what shouldn't have been said, what had been said. And we just thought, oh, you know, let's call it a day. So we quit while we were, we were on the top, I suppose. Quit while we were ahead. <laughs> well, this is the new single and it's uh, off the new album. Yeah. It's out now at m m one music dot com. I'll put a link in the comments yeah. so you can the check singles, out the, f- the full the singles album. called War in the Ghetto. It's War in the Ghetto, and yeah, just give it a wee introduction, man, and I will get as I'm getting. You'll be to introduce it now. Yeah, introduce it. I think we're ready. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this this was written um, about all the knife crime that, uh, that I was seeing in London and stories I'd heard from mates and family members and. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's, it's it's trying to increase the peace. And we're ready for that now. So, next one, we will go live to the new single, which is featured on 
One Extra, Radio 1 and 6 Music. And now, finally, you call that radio. Let us know in the comments what you make of it. And we'll see you in a minute. I'm a peaceful hustler, but I've seen another life for some. Ego and money chasing, people doing silliness, pure vanities. Don't talk about urban regeneration if you can't regenerate mindsets. If you don't prove yourself, you're going to get stepped on. Only the para survive. You can't be a pussy old on Hackney Road. Not that man, too hood. Postcode ghetto wars. Allow it, bro, allow it. We go again. There's inherited beef. One minute he goes to the shop with his mate. Next minute he's been stabbed by an orc. Every other day, 5 0 knock at his door. He likes to go back in time. He knows how everything is going to end up. He's here in his yard. It's safe, it's calm. It's not safe out there. Exploited, trafficked. Keeping thugs sweet. The government only cares about itself. They're not talking to people in the blocks or council estates. They're talking to people in Chelsea or Mayfair. He gave up on himself in the borough. This is the life. You don't need to look for it, because it's right there. No one carries a shank for fashion. It's not for show. For him, it's for defence. If the time came, he'd be 100% prepared to use it. It's either him or them. He'd rather be in jail than dead. That's the reality. He feels like Superman until it's time to run. He's got his squads back. People get shot at, wet up, people are dying. He's a soldier. If a soldier can do it, he can do it. It's another East Side story. His days are filled with hypervigilance, bare violations, anxiety attacks, and super paranoia. Cracked fiends, laughing hyenas, bullies, snitches, slipping, snakes, psychopaths on the front line. You don't know what you're gonna hear. Who's gonna die next? He doesn't like speeding cars going the wrong way. Pinks, black cars, dodgy license plates. He wants to leave. It's a sad life. There's nothing to be glamorized. Children die. Everyone wants to leave. It's just about timing. Dealing food. Road man running from the jakes. He can't be doing this no more. But as long as there is drugs and poverty, we'll always have a gang problem. He likes his probation officer, she's like family. He can't even argue with her. Magistrates give him a 12 month referral order under the supervision of a youth offending team. He's enrolled in college. He seems to be turning his life around. No more county lines, no more stab vests for the ghetto youth. No more county lines, no more stab vests for the ghetto youth. As you call that Radio TV, we are live with anti-social worker Paul Wellens tonight, absolute legend. Just a wee shout out 
to all the patrons who support the show at patreon.com forward slash you call that radio or if you're one of the YouTube members, thank you for keeping the show going. And um, also, the audio podcast is back. A few people have been asking where that got to. It is back. Uh, check Spotify, Apple, uploading a new one every week. This The last three weeks we've had Dominic Diamond, we've had the author John Higgs, and we had uh, Mandarin, lead singer of Bis, and we've got, I think, Mary Kiani should be out tomorrow. So if you prefer an audio podcast, go to Apple, Spotify, or any of the podcast apps when you like to listen to them. But we're actually having a live video stream right now with the legend Paul Wellens. We're just listening to uh, the, the new single, absolutely brilliant, which yeah. was done in one take, unbelievably. In one take, yeah. East side, it's an East Side story, man. That's what it is. Um, so, so, so you, you, and you were saying that you picked the beats that day as well. Yeah. So, so, did you, so were you just practicing that as a, an a cappella piece? Did you yeah, yeah, perform it live it. a couple of times before? You nah, I just no, nah, I just wrote it, read it back to myself once. Went in the studios and picked out tunes that that fitted the lyrics really, you know. And we did it. I say we recorded the whole thing in one hour, in a, a couple of hours. I mean, it's, there's a lot of London slang on the album, but I'm, I'm trying not to talk too much London slang tonight because obviously I know. Honestly, I've mate, got just a go Scottish for it. Audience, go for but... it. Don't dumb it down for us, for us. Sake, <laughs> and before he went, before he went, an eyelash. I learned already that before he went live, he went for an eyelash, which is a, I'm assuming is a slash. slash. Yeah, that's go right. Go yeah. for a pee. Okay. So yeah, no, keep no keep the keep the London slang going. Okay. Yeah, I just saw that you interviewed Jason Williamson there as well from Sleaford yeah. Mods, who I love. I've seen him live three or four times. I'd, I'd love to get a gig with him if you can fix that up for me. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so, man. I don't. No. I don't really think so. It, it, it was. It was sound. It was sound. But it was. Uh, it was my pal Jen. She's friends. I think she knows him personally, and no, she's right. the manager, no, which I think enough. I think that's his wife. So there's yeah. some kind of connection there, but there's no. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like, a, I'd take a support slot as well, mate. Yeah, to be honest, mate. or a collab. I'll do a or collab. A, or a collaboration. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, they're, 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 they're smashing it live just now. And who else is? Who else are you enjoying? I mean, I think we're about to see. I've just had the day that Emil and the Sniffers are supposed to be playing on the fifteenth of November. They've actually moved their gig to the the the, the twenty ninth of this month. All right. And it was supposed to be Bob Villain supporting, or we thought Bob Villain was supporting. But I've been loving what Bob Villain's been doing. Have you have you heard any of his stuff? Not really, no. I mean, I, I say, I'm, I, to be honest, I mainly listen to grime and reggae these days. That's this what, is what I mean, it's great. It's great. Grime, grime. This is kind of grime what... rock music. Um, yeah. Bob Villain's. Um, I thought I thought it might have been up your street. Yeah. Definitely a grime I, I, I've heard the name, but I don't know much about. I mean, obviously. You know, Amber with the Sniffers, it, it, it's a great name because, I mean, I used to be a bit of a speed freak myself, you know. Yeah. So, that, so as soon as I saw that name, I thought... Well, I yeah, I mean, they're, straight, they're more straight up Aussie rock and roll. I think they're just a rock and roll oh, band. Right. And also, right. they did do a collaboration with Sleaford Mods as well. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Bob Villain, definitely check out Bob Villain. Kind of grime with, with guitars. I think I think. I, I, think might, I might have heard him. The name seems familiar. But I'm, I'm, I'm mainly, um, you know, I'm, I'm mainly into sort of like people like Koji Radical... You know, yes. Kano, Little Sims, those sort of people. You know, very intelligent, grime, stroke, hip hop artists. They're, they're the people I like. Was it sh- uh, shoot, shoot and Kill? Is it uh, Little Sims? Shoot and shoot. Kill, yeah. That's a oh, top what a tune, yeah. man. One yeah, of my favourite tunes of the last year. I kind of get enough of that tune. Tier. And Koji Radical, I don't know a lot about it, but I was, I was gutted to miss it, Boomtown. But Koji Radical's got a, had a single out a couple of months ago that I played on the show as well. Fantastic. Yeah. And obviously, right. Kano. Oh, you don't need to say anything about Kino. Absolutely. No, no, no. You know your P's and Q's. Some feedback <laughs> from your from the song. Uh, Jay Lee says, no, Jay Lee, no. who's a, uh, an MC up here, a great MC up here, he says, yeah. reminds me of Mike Skinner with the slang and poetry kind of vibes. Yeah, I like the streets. Yeah, I don't. But to be honest, the anti-social work has apparently slightly influenced the streets. So yeah. we came a long time before Mike Skinner, but I don't know. I don't know whether he'd confirm that, but someone told me that. I don't know if true that is. Yeah, I mean the, the first, the Street's first album was a game changer. Oh, for me. do you know what? I was in uh, Oxford Street um, in London, in HMV, the big store there, and uh, they played that um, the yeah, original pirate material. And uh, when I heard it, I thought I've, I've heard nothing like this. This is this is unreal. And I went straight to the store, the store attendant. I said, "Yeah, what's this?" They said, "Oh, the Streets." I said, "Yeah, I'll have it right now." Yeah. And I bought it. I, I played it to death. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that so. I mean, I'm, I'm not, not not a massive fan of the stuff that came up later. But, no, but, but that, it there's reminded, something about that yeah, that just I, changed everything. Yeah, it was, it reminded I never heard me, anything I, like it. Yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I no, reminded me, 
reminded me of my pirate radio days, you know, because I, I used to be on a station called LWR, um, and we used to play at Tower Blocks, like the North Peckham Estate was a very heavy estate, you know, where where um, fucking doctors wouldn't go, like uh, medics wouldn't go, but taxis wouldn't go anywhere. But we, we had a we had a show there, and they used to guard the aerial with um, with baseball bats on the roof to stop rival stations cutting it down and all that. Um, but you know, Mike Skinner's that album reminded me of those pirate radio days because LWR, you know, we were playing pioneering. We were like the original rebel pioneers who were part of who were playing um, underground black music because Radio One and all these commercial stations were just all the DJs sounded like bank managers, you know, and it was uh, and they were just playing a lot of pop music and there was no real black music in the eighties on, on mainstream radio. So we, 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 we started that scene and we had DJs like Pete Tong on there. You know, he's gone on to be a superstar. Uh, we had uh, Maxi Jazz from Faithless. You know, Legend. beautiful, 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 gentle soul he was. And sadly, people like Westwood, who, you know, we don't talk about now. <laughs> don't talk about, can we talk about Westwood? Oh, do we have to? Well, uh, no, we don't have to. But I don't. Did, I don't want to get done by his lawyers or anything. Right. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll just say. Did you? Would you? Did, was it a surprise to you, or did you think? You, did you have get bad vibes off him? Um, he was always hanging around with young girls. Yeah. I mean, but I, I don't want to say further than that. I mean, right. he, he he started off. I mean, he, he did nick. Um, there was a reggae DJ called David Rodigan. He used to play at a. Uh, a club called Gossips in Soho, where I, where I also DJ with a guy called Desi Parks, and uh, he was like the king of rare grooves sort of thing. And uh, Westwood, yeah, Nick Rodigan's act, you know, and Rodigan was like the, in my opinion, Westwood Nick Rodigan's act because uh, Westwood was working as a barman in this club called Gossips, and um, he used a lot of phrases on radio that Rodigan was using, you know, a lot of the sort of yardy talk and all that, you know. It's all going down with your boy Westwood and all this stuff. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, he, he, he originally started out playing a bit of R&B and, and, like, he played some good hip-hop back in the day. He was well-respected by Def Jam, you know, like people like Public Enemy respected him in the early days um, and, and Pac and all these people. But um, but then he, I think the whole thing went to his head. All that power went to his head and... Um, he, because he was, you know, the biggest name in hip hop in the UK at the time, and DJ wise, and he he started um, believing his own sort of publicity, and and then he, with power comes, you know, it's meant to come great responsibility, but I think with him it, it came with great irresponsibility, and he did a lot of a lot of bad things. Um, Paul's but, saying there's nothing you, know. you could say about Westwood that his lawyers could refute. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, I've got to be honest with you. I mean, I, I, I did one of his first interviews on the Evening Standard. I interviewed him when he was on the same... St- he, he, he'd, he'd gone on a Kiss pirate station by the time I got to LWR. So, But I, I, I did know him. I used to stay around his flat in Hammersmith. Um, and um, we used to go up to Soul Weekenders together. We used to drive up there and he used to DJ and, and there'd be Trevor Nelson with us and all that mob. And... Um, yeah, I, I didn't see any evidence of the sort of stuff he's been accused of now, really. Although he did like, you know, young younger girls. I'm not saying underage girls, but younger girls. And um, but you know, as I say, I I just think that the whole you know the whole thing went to his head, and he just thought, you know, I'm untouchable. I can do what I like because I've got all that wealth, all that power, and uh, and you Boy. know. Well, let's Corrupted. forget about Tim Westwood. Let's talk about the two other, le- the actual legends that you mentioned there, uh, Pete Tong, Maxi Jazz. Pete Tong, just think talking about we're talking about rhyming slang. When did it's all gone Pete, Pete Tong? Pete Tong is, when did he? When was the point that his name started getting used as rhyming slang? Well, it was mainly in, the, in like the warehouse parties and the acid raids in London. I mean, I used to go to a lot of them. You know, I was good friends with a guy called Terry Farley who. Uh, who started off this fanzine called Boys Own, and I used to um, write for that. And, um, yeah, that was all going around then. And um, uh, uh, and the other thing was, uh, oh, they used to say things like, oh, he's he's got, he, he needs a couple of Wilsons for that, you know, and that was Wilson Pickett, Ticket, and, you know, it's all these, all these strange things. And then, of course, the shaman 
they reproduced all that, didn't they? Mr. C reproduced all that, you know, and he won't got any salmon and, you know, all that. But Ebenezer good and all that stuff, you know. Um, and so, you know, lens, any Vera's? Any Vera's, yeah. Anyone got any Vera's? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, the slang now is, 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 is very different. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a sort of old school Londoner, really. But, you know, nowadays, you know, all the kids, I mean, my kids used to talk what they called Jafakan, you know, they used to call like, almost talking as, but well, it's mainly sort of a lot of hip hop slang, a lot of grime slang, but they'd almost talk, you know, and my kids are white. I mean, I'm, I'm married to a black woman now, but my first wife, um, uh, she, sorry, my kids were, were, were like using a lot of Jamaican slang and what they call Jamaican. and so, but now, you know, a lot of the London kids now, the white kids are talking in a lot of, almost like a pure Jamaican accent, you know. The patwa. The patwa. Patwa. You get me, star. I got some more, some more comments about the, the last, the song. Uh, Words of Life's Truths with Beats and a Booming Bass Line. Loving it, says Epi. Oh, thank you, um, Epi. Yeah. Collect saying, Increase the Peace. What a good rap lyric. Your wee man is broad the night. Love your fresh characters. Bonnie, you've done it again. Love your bones, baby doll. <laughs> and Jay Lee. You call say, Baby Doll a lot, aren't you? Yeah. Well, it's Shall doll, I call you Baby name. Doll? She's Baby Doll. She calls everyone <laughs> Baby Doll, and she is Baby Doll. Oh, right. So, okay. So oh, she, yeah. is, she is oh, Colette right. is Baby Doll. And oh, so right. are you. So am I, and so is everybody watching us. These are all baby dolls, but Lovely. collects the original Lovely. baby doll and the original sugar cube as well. Uh, Jay Lee saying that was an epic tune from the beat to the bars. Great concept oh, and message respect to, to you, Jay Lee. Um, it's a good noise, says Stuart. Great tune, Thank you, says Stuart. Lou. Thank you, Lou. And uh, Lou's also asking about is that the new you call that radio jingle? I like it, it's funky. No, it's actually one of the old ones, but um, Colin Simon, God, the Duncan Jr., made a four minute song. And we've only used 20 seconds of it, but that's like the guitar solo that near the end. We're actually going to do, we're going to release an album called Now That's What I Call You Call That Radio. And we'll just put all the, the jingles on it for it. So if you're a patron, expect that in your inbox soon. I'm just going to put it together. And we've got about six songs now that's been used for the jingles. Um, really good tune, loved it. It says Marco. Thank you. Angela loves the London slang. Good to see you here, Thank Angela. You, Angela. Um, and uh, Emil and the Sniffers. Will be a great gig. My next one's Deep Purple, then Mickey Nines, and finishing the year off with Wet Leg. A lot of Wet Legs, yeah. Well, Wet Leg, I met them at McCool's. They played at a tiny little pub called McCool's about, I don't know, eight, eight months ago. Mm. And now they're playing in, like, what was it, Jimmy Kimmel or whatever, and last night in New York. Yeah. They have I've never seen a band blow up quite as quick as that in a yeah. long time. Bit of lady power, right on, yeah. sister. Well, they said that they're going to do the show. They, they, they chatted after the gig, but I think they've, they've get too, they may have got too big now. I don't know. Mm. It's worth an email. I think I've maybe missed the boat, though. I should have followed up a bit quicker. Um, go, um, have you heard of uh, Aluya? Is I'm saying that right? I think she's great, says Epi. I don't, I'm not sure about that. I think that was know. when we were talking about the grime stuff. I'll oh, right. write that down and check it out. I know Aluya. Uh, <laughs> Aluya, I think it's a different one. Um, Julie's saying, I'd good to know, man. Could definitely see Mike being influenced by you. And the grand don't come from free was a classic. I know there was some good tunes in that. I just didn't. I think it's quite. I it just. I just like. I hadn't heard anything like the first album, so I think it didn't have the, quite the same effect on me. Mm. Did I not spot another Gyro's gig on the twenty sixth? Yes, the Gyro Babies will be playing Classic Grand in the twenty sixth of November. That is correct. Um, and uh, I'm going to give another shout out to the album one more time. It's, it's M1 Music. We've, we've done. We've, we've actually done over an hour now. Um, so it's M1. Don't Music. forget to put in the. Uh... The uh, Burston Festival thing, because that's a yes, dedication to my wife. To and I've that, got a little story about that, very interesting yes, story. Yes, okay, well, man, I'm in the rush. Yeah. I'm getting that in the day. M1music.com for the album. If you've been enjoying the tunes tonight, I'll put, the li I'll put the link in the comments as well. So we've got, obviously, we've covered your journalism, the, the yeah. music, but of course you're, you're performing as a, a spoken word performer as well. Yeah. I believe this is a spoken word thing that we're going to, we're about to check it. Yeah. So it's just, what is it we're about to watch? Oh, sorry, yeah, she's from Burston Festival this year. Uh, I did a, a gig where, which Burston Festival it was the longest strike in history where a lot of the school kids walked out and supported the teachers getting sacked by the sort of farm owners. And uh, I did a gig with Mick Lynch from the RNT, you know, genuine working class hero, um, and uh, the comedian Mark Thomas. And I, I did a thing called... Um, 
this one of the tracks from my new album, and it's a thing called Empress, and it's it's a dedication to my to my wife, um, who is actually the the niece of the late great reggae superstar Sugar Miner. So I feel truly blessed. I met I, I met her. I met her on um. I know this is going to sound flash, but I had a bit of a tax rebate. Um, I, I met her on a world cruise, which is only about ten grand, but uh, and um, she was the only one under sixty on the boat. I thought she looked, you know hot as fuck and and five years later we're, we're still married and you know i've had a i've had a i've had it you know i've had some ups and downs in my life i've had i've had some real so i've had some real shit happen in my life but right now i feel i'm 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 living the dream you know what i mean i live by the coast i'm two minutes walk from the beach i'm writing poetry i'm playing out and i'm married to this beautiful woman and this is empress my tribute to her If you got it there, <laughs> her son, my stepson, cried when he heard it. So, which is lovely. You still there? Hello. <laughs> Baby, I am here. I am here. Okay. I'm just getting. Right. I'm just getting this set. I'm sorry. I muted myself because I thought we we're ready to go. And you just, uh, where, where, could you just give me a wee bit of background to the festival, and then are we ready to go in about five seconds? Right. What well, more about the person? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it's a, an annual festival, so it's like a socialist festival. Um, you get all the trade unions come up, all the labour movement, and um, loads of people have played there. Like you know, you get a lot of big speakers. Um, you know, you've had Tony Benn speak there, Dennis Skinner. Um, you know, the late great Bob Crow, one of my political heroes. Um, and you get a lot of bands as well. Billy Bragg plays there. You know, all the usual suspects, Attila. Um, yeah, yeah you know, Attila. Have, have you heard the Attila dub album as well? Yeah, I, I was a bit. I was. I gotta be honest. When he told me he'd done a dub album, I thought, "Oh, this ain't gonna work." You know what I mean? Because I, I, I've known Attila forty-one years. I put one of his first gigs on. And I love Attila. He, he, we we played loads of gigs with him back in the day with the anti-social workers. Um, and I thought, I don't know about him doing dub poetry. You know, because he's a really good punk poet. And I thought, I don't know, maybe he's not going to fit in with it with the reggae sound. But in actual fact, it's it's a great album. I, I gave it, you know, um, I, I it, it it sort of um, what's the word? It kind of um, it completely changed my preconceptions about it. Yeah, and Benjamin Ziff and I loved it, so that's good enough for me. And I've played with Benjamin, you know, love the man. Yeah, it was. It was it, I, I was. I had kind of some similar, similar thoughts. I was just sort of more surprised that he was. He was doing a dub album. So obviously, mm. I've just known him as, as, as a fantastic poet. Mm. But um, incredible. I really liked it. I seen him. He mm. performed at the Icebox, and I thought it worked really well. Yeah, so it did. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, so uh, yep, yeah, definitely. It seems to work a year. And like I said, with Don, Donald Jenkins is the guy you should check out as well for uh, more grime poetry from the from the Jordy end of the country. Right. Okay. But, so I'll take out, out Donald that. Jenkins. I think oh, yeah, give my night to anyone. Don does um, some a great night um, in Newcastle for spoken word. I'm okay. sure he would love to to have. Maybe I'll team up with you. I'll share a stage with you one yeah, night. That'd absolutely, man. We'll get we'll get you. We'll get up in Glasgow. No bother. Yeah, and yeah. Get, get, nice. I'm sure Don would love to have you then up in Newcastle as well. Yeah, so, the weird thing about Attila's album though, because it, it it's it's an all white production. You know, the, the guys who are doing the reggae are all white. And, and obviously, we did a very similar thing with the anti-social workers in '83. But the thing was, we were playing with a mad professor, and we were playing with all virtually all Jamaican musicians. I mean, we had on drums, we had the guy who's um, in the film Rockers. I don't know if you've ever seen that film. It's a top mm -hmm. reggae film. Well, um, uh, the guy who's the lead character in that was a drummer on our albums. So I, I, I personally didn't think it was going to work, but I've done a great job. And apparently, his producer. Uh, Attila's producer is working with Freddie McGregor in Jamaica, so you know he's doing all right. Kingsley Salmon, I think his name is. Amazing. This is the I've got it ready now. This is Paul Lay from Boston Festival. Beautiful wife Roma, who's filming in the front row there. Uh, the uh, the niece of the uh, reggae superstar Sugar Miner. She's the biggest superstar in the house today. Woo! And this is called Empress. You are sugar's cuz, 
always got good things going. From reggae royalty with humbleness flowing. You are my empress, my warrior woman, my Jamaican queen. I'm your number one fan. We saw the whole world and met at sea, and soon you were my wifey to be. I remember visiting your school in downtown Kingston, retracing your steps out of the friend zone to Tough Gong Studios and Marley and Tosh's grave and your joyful smile could save any rave you say nice like rice and stop your noise you're feisty but you know how to treat silly boys we clapped for higher pay for healthcare workers you nursed all your life no shirkers now I just want to grow old with you because I love everything and anything you do now I just want to grow old with you because I love everything and anything you do. Thank you. Yeah, no respect in the aspect to my leg. Mark, the love of the man I talk on the radio. Case you never know. You call that to radio, radio, call that to radio, radio. You call that to radio, radio, call that to radio, radio. Yes, amazing stuff. That's brilliant. Impress. Yeah, it's got a lot of memories through that, me that because um, recently my stepson, who's a real hard East End geezer, you know, what I mean? he's a proper geezer. Um, he came up and obviously, you know, uh, I'm his stepdad now. Now I've met Roma and. Um, and he said, Paul, that tune Empress that you played about my mum, he, he said, it just moved me to tears. And he started crying when we were having dinner. And I just held his hand and I started crying. I know, and we're both, you know, reason, tough cookies, really. You know, we've both gone through a lot of shit in our life. And it was such an emotional moment. And my wife started filling up as well. But, yeah, it's amazing the power of words, you know, just when you're spilling your truth out, you know. Absolutely, yeah. man, absolutely. It's... Um... So it's something about with spoken word when it's done right, man. It just hits. It hits. G Lee yeah. saying amazing yeah, poem. Different. Yeah. Lou saying now that's a true love poem. Thank you, Lou. Respect to the wife says Epi. Nice. And what bra words to say about your good lady, sweet says Colette. I'm learning your Scottish slang. Now, uh, <laughs> as I say, don't dumb, <laughs> don't dumb down for us. Gives as much London slang as you like. Uh, beautiful <laughs> words. Keep living the dream says Angela. Yeah, I'll try. And Empress, yes, and also, by the way, funny enough, we've got uh, Empress, ironically, at nine o'clock tonight, we're actually going to be uh, uh, premiering a live stream of uh, the, the best, probably, in my opinion, one of the best uh, rappers in the country, Empress, uh, I, I don't think, if you watch this tonight, you're not going to deny it, Empress, I say Empress, I don't even know if I'm, I'm I think because her name's Emma, I thought, her stage name is Empress, but it might just be Empress. I don't know. Yeah. But whatever it is, she is uh, phenomenal. Nine o'clock on our YouTube channel. Uh, I'll put a wee link in the comments to check it out. And you'll mm. see how how we do hip hop and Paisley. Yeah, man. A, a wee, a wee well, I, just... I like that Scottish guy who was on the rap game, you know. I thought he was one of the best on it. Uh, Shogun. Uh, Shogun, man. Yeah. Yes, aye, it, was, it was a bit cheeky. He, got kicked he off. had a lot of attitude, but I love yes, him. Yes, yeah. he does have an attitude. He's... he's First gig was uh, on my stage at Audio Suit. Oh, that's it. So I got his first gig. Wow. He's, he's done. He's done. He's done amazing. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, like yeah. Him. I think they were trying to tell him what to do, and it, it's yeah. just not how, he, how he rolls. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he did. He did good. I mean, I think that. I think maybe I, I was a bit biased, but I thought he was the best on the show that, that I, year. I thought so. Yeah, and he's so different, really, because there are a lot of Londoners who who, who they because Crepton Conan and. And Target, you know, they're all Londoners. So there's a London bias. So it's great yeah. to hear different regional accents, you know. Absolutely, man. Scotland's got a phenomenal uh, scene. It's just hard. And it's interesting, we were talking to Don Jenkins about that. You can't, everywhere outside of London's got that issue. Whereas mm. people in London don't really take it as yeah. seriously as they might. And I suppose another thing is, it's about the slang as well. You know, yeah, if, you, yeah. if you try to be true to yourself and speak in your own accent, then you're going to... But I mean, I didn't know American slang when I got into hip hop. You just learn it, you know. I yeah, didn't know. Does, yeah. like, well, we talk about Mike Skinner earlier on the streets. That was the first time. I mean, the first time I heard that, I was like, I don't know if I like that. I don't know. I couldn't. <laughs> it's similar to Dizzy Rascal. It was like it was so much to get my brain to get. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't that used to first Dizzy album blew yeah. me away. Yeah, because uh, he, he grew up about a mile from where I used to live, so you know. It just it's a it different like, generation. Is, I've never heard anything like this, and I just I was addicted to it. I just kept on listening to it again and again. And I was like, hold on, I actually fucking love this. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But 
uh, because it was so new, it was like, and that, that's usually the best songs um, are like that, aren't they? They don't, they, they, it grows on you and you're just mm. taking it all in. Oh, mate, when I when I heard that first Dizzy album, it gassed me up so much. I, I think I had it on repeat for about a week. Yeah. Uh, I've just never heard anything like it, you know. Well, you can imagine, from a, from a Glaswegian perspective, just, you know, because you're hearing this accent, you're yeah. not used to hearing it in this new type of music. Yeah. So, I mean, and he, was, the weird thing was, he was also name dropping places I knew, you know, the, yeah, so, so it's even more it. very that. autobiographical, you know. I mean, I've got a track on the new album called East is East, which talks about, you know, all the East London things I did, you know, good, bad, whatever, ugly. And, um, yeah, so, uh, so that's that's my sort of homage to, to East London. I so say, even though I was born in the London New Towns. There's a lot of East End in me, you know. And the so gig, have you got gigs coming up? Is there anything in the book just now? Well, at the moment I'm seeing. I don't know if I told you I'm seeing an agent, and um, yeah, he's he's meant to be lining me up festivals and benefit gigs and charity fundraisers, and and he's he's well connected. You know, I'm going down to Soho to see him, and he, he's he's with a lot of household names. I won't mention the people, but um, yeah. and hopefully I'm going to sign with him next week. So. Yeah, I mean, he's talking about maybe the small stage at Glasgow and uh, Rebellion and all sorts of places, yeah. That'd be amazing, yeah. man. Amazing. Yeah. Well, give us a shout if you're fancy a trip up to Scotland. I'm sure we could sort Oh, I'd love it. I'd love it. I would, I would really... My, my missus loves travelling, and she said, what she loves about coming out with me, because now, do now I'm doing poetry, because I've decided to to put the DJ on the back burner. You know, I've, I've, I've had enough of that. There's it's too many egotists, too many snakes, too many... I mean, the great thing about poetry is you're creating your own work, whereas DJing, you're just recreating someone else's work, you know? And and the brilliant thing is, you know, I could do a poetry gig. I don't know what you pay in Scotland. I mean, what would I get playing at the Icebox out of interest? No idea. Icebox no, is now no longer exists, right. actually, okay. sadly. All right, well, let me just say, for instance, right, say I get paid 150, 200 quid, right, yeah. to do a poetry gig, right? Um, I'd only have to do a 20-minute set um i get um you know if the audience are decent you know they're a little applaud after every poem and all i've got to bring along is my bloody poetry book you know what i mean that's all i've got to carry bring a few extras whereas, and you can sell some well, yeah whereas if D, djing if i'm no i mean this is my like this these are all the, the lyrics from the album this is my yeah. original thing you know um but if I was DJing, if I had to play out and do my own night, I'd have to be lugging all this heavy gear for 200 quid. I'd have to play at least two hours. Do you know what I mean? And my missus got sick of it. She said, oh, I hate all this DJing, you know, and no one's applauding you. You're, Late they're, just, they're, as well. they're doing their own thing. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're buzzing off their nut doing whatever they're doing. But, Late nights as well, you're getting, you're, you're playing. Yeah, and also, you know, my missus just got fed up with it. She said, I don't do that no more. But she loves the idea about, going all over the country doing poetry gigs. And she said, you know, you'll do a poem about me, you'll get some applause, you've only got to work <laughs> 20 minutes, and, you know, sweet as a nut, you know. We, and you've got, we, it's still early enough to go for a pint somewhere else. Yeah, we, and she said, we can make a holiday out of it. Yeah. That's what we're going to do, do a bit of travelling. Like, when I come up to Scotland, I'll go, come and see the sights. I mean, I've only been to Scotland a couple of times. I've obviously been to the Edinburgh Fringe and all that stuff. But I've done, um, I, I remember once I was working for this um, PR company, um, I was like poacher turned gamekeeper. I was a journalist turned PR, which is not great. But um, and uh, and they were based in Scotland, but I was working in London. And they um, phoned me up one day and said, "Get a flight from Stansted to Glasgow. We've got some news for you." So I took a, a flight up to Glasgow, and the news was they were giving me the team tack. They were sacking me, and I, I thought, "I can't believe this! I've flown all the way up to Glasgow for them to like to to, to out me of the job." Uh, so I said, oh, I ain't having this. So I said, can someone take me around to the Celtic ground? You know, because I, I, I'm, you know, <laughs> my Scottish team is Celtic. You know, being with the socialist connections and all that, I've got the Celtic shirt. And um, but that, I'm, I'm a West Ham supporter, but my 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 Scottish team is Celtic. And um, and and she, she, the receptionist goes, oh, I feel so sorry for you that you got the sack. So I'll drive you to the Celtic ground. So she, bless her heart, she drove me in a little, I don't know what it was, a little mini. We drove to the Celtic ground. I touched the wall. And I thought, "Wow, I've actually been at the Celtic ground." So that that was a that was amazing for me. Amazing, brilliant yeah. stuff. So you've been at you've been at Celtic so even, Park, even though I got the sack, and then straight after that, I had to get a plane back <laughs> and tell my <laughs> wife I got made redundant. 
Oh, but yeah. you got to see Celtic Park. But I've got so to not, see the Celtic ground. It's not yeah. all bad. It's not. It was no, all bad. bad. Yeah, no, we'll get you. We'll get you up. We'll get you up there. Is it? Um, I was just saying, his Xbox gone. I twerked there. <laughs> yes, what, the Xbox sadly. And it's a little going, Xbox was a, a great community venue. It did. It, it had, a, it had a pet food bank. It had a, a normal food bank. It did um, clothes swap, so people could just pay, take take free clothes and stuff. Did it? They're still going to keep the the charity work up. They're still going to be doing the food bank stuff. And, right. Uh, um, so yeah, keep keep, keep Mate, an Xbox page. They won't, they won't I've got come to tell back. you. You know, we talked about having an eyelash earlier. Yeah. Well, I'm. Absolutely breaking my neck. Well, that's, fi- right that's fine, mate. That was maybe a sign that it's time to wrap up. Yeah, do you, gonna, wanna, do you want to put that who's watching you on? I'm going to finish with who's watching. That's exactly yeah. what I'm going to do. Okay. Give it a quick intro and then you can go for an, for an eyelash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, this is uh, Who's Watching You by uh, the anti social workers from, uh, uh, with the mad professor, the legendary dub producer from 1983 from the album Positive Style. And uh, it was played by John Peel on Radio One. And that's uh, how it happens. Amazing stuff, mate. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you tonight. Thank you, mate. And yeah. hopefully see you in God Glasgow. Bless. I'll give you a shout if I'm doing that. You're in the woods. Uh, but I've put the link for the Impress. So at nine o'clock, uh, there's a wee link here. I put, if you go into the comments, you'll see Impress, nine o'clock. Watch it with us. I'll be in the comments chatting about it. It's a, it's a great set. And you can also, we've talked about Tiller the Stockbroker. There's a link there to watch the interview with mm. him. Thank you very much, Paul. This is going pleasure, back to mate. 1983. We're going to go end, we're going to end at the start. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers, brother. Have a good eyelash. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs> right. Yeah, sure, mate. You can check my census form. My name's the Orgasm Addict. 147 people live here. Our outside toilet has four inside doors. I go to work in a submarine. I'm a part-time rat gasser and full-time piss artist. And I was born on a small island of St. Bollard. That's right, straight up mate, straight up. Who's watching you? In the land of the true. Phone tapping census forms. They're the keepers of the human zoo. Our lives become files. In their dark office room. Computers know about you. From the womb to the tomb. Life becomes a memory We're figures in a lottery game When your number is called Run like hell Cause it'll never be the same But beware Cause I'll have a printout Of where you're running to Cause state surveillance wants control Over me and you Repeat over me